Hello, everybody, and welcome to the PHLY Eagles podcast on a Monday afternoon, 4 o'clock. Everybody's getting ready for the Phillies game in an hour, but we got some big news, Zach Berman. The Eagles, Howie Roseman never sleeps, and once again, he has raided the Tennessee Titans after trading for A.J. Brown. Now it's time to bring Kevin Byard, the two-time All-Pro safety, home to Philadelphia. I know that stirs emotions within you. Yes, Kevin Byard, a Philadelphia native. He moved when he was 14, but on his Titans bio, he lists his favorite food as cheesesteak. His favorite athlete as a kid is Allen Iverson, so kindred spirits in, in, in that regard. But from a football perspective here. I think you guys look alike, too. Yeah. <laughs> a two-time All-Pro at a major position of need here. Compensation seems reasonable. Fifth-round pick, sixth-round pick, Terrell Edmonds. This is a major move. We've been talking about how the Eagles needed to add a safety. We've been talking about the veteran options they could go after. I wasn't sure if the Titans would be sellers or not. The fact that they sold, this is... You know Ryan Tannehill's their quarterback? Even though Ryan Tannehill okay. is their quarterback? It's a new GM. It's, an, it's, you know, it's a new GM. He doesn't GM. need to push his chips in. Yeah. He's got time. No, but they did some things with Byard's contract before the season. So I was thinking Kevin Byard or Justin Simmons were kind of the, the big veteran options they could go after. He's 30 years old. The cap obligation here, you have the prorated version of, of or the prorated portion of the $4 million left on his contract. And then they have to figure out what happens thereafter next year. Looks like it's but, about $14 million mm-hmm. is the team option for yep. next year. They have to make a decision by mid-March, right after the flip yep. over to the league year. You figure that, well, they'll see how this goes. But but this is a move made because the Eagles are 6-1, and one, bona fide Super Bowl contenders. And they had... Questions going into the summer, into the season about safety. They have even more questions now. They played last night with with without both their starting safeties. And here they are acquiring a two-time All-Pro who has ball-hawking ability, who has versatility. Who, uh, th- th- this is a move that makes a lot of sense. And again, we, we've seen how he makes splashes. You and I did a podcast after the Robert Quinn trade last year. And we acknowledge that you can't just just judge it based on the name and the resume. It's about the performance you're getting for the rest of the season. But given what the Eagles had at at uh, at safety here, I I like this move. And I'll dig in more to Bayard in the next 24 hours. And it's a good thing we have a show tomorrow. And I'll talk to Sean Desai tomorrow and Nick Sirianni Wednesday. I did ask Sirianni about this. We just got off the phone with Sirianni. He couldn't address it, but... Uh, he, uh, I mean, he could have addressed it. He, well, It's a little convenient. I mean, I don't know if, if he's spoken yet to Terrell Edmonds. There's there's dynamics involved He doesn't there. have to say True, uh, yeah. all of the things okay. about every part of the deal. He could say... I played against Kevin Byard, <laughs> okay. you know, two times a sure. year in the AFC South, Fair. and boy, that's a heck of a player. I can't confirm yeah. or deny, but that would be a good thing. Like, <laughs> yeah, true. You know, he could play ball a little okay. bit. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. Okay. Uh, but in 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 any event, this is a uh, this is a major move that I don't want to say it tilts the Eagles' Super Bowl odds. That that might be hyperbole, but it certainly plugs what I felt was the biggest hole that they had right now. Yeah, we've got a lot to unpack about this. We're also going to talk uh, about the game from last night. You know, we had a whole show planned until uh, until this yes. this happened. And I got to say, I'm a little bit miffed because <laughs> I've been planning this. You I've, been, I've been I've been wanting to do the Quackatology <laughs> trade deadline targets episode for like three weeks now, and we keep pushing it back and pushing it back. And I knew how we was going to yeah. make a move before we able, we were able to get the show. It's oh. what what the heck? Well, first off. My bad. I take responsibility for that. You wanted to do it last week. I did. That's true. You but wanted I to do also, it last I week. I could have pushed it. It's not. It's, it's not just your fault. I said. I said. Let's let's do it next week. And you and I were talking this morning about the show, and uh, I said, you know, we should dedicate Tuesday's show to the trade deadline, but maybe we do a segment today to get forward because Tuesdays are when trades usually go down. You didn't say that. They said not what I said. No, okay. you didn't say that. I uh, said that. Said, well, let's at least get ahead of it in case they make a move. Okay. Basically, I said let's dedicate Tuesday show to that. No, I I did say should we do something today? You didn't say that. I said that. I have to go back and look at the receipts here. <laughs> nonetheless, nonetheless, yeah, I'm sorry we didn't do this last week, uh, but we are going to have ample time 
to talk about it. We can also talk about what those other can I alter- read? The, can I read the exchange? <laughs> sure. You, can read you the said uh, I said, what do you want to hit on today? You said uh, Jalen injury. How concerned we should be. So this is a good preview for the rest <laughs> of the show that's coming up. What stands out about the sigh? Now, you have a take that I, I will not read this part because okay. I think this is a, an interesting take that you have, but something general about the game last night. Uh, and then you said, I think tomorrow we can dig into trade targets. Pretty, okay. pretty reasonable. Yeah. I said, yeah, we need to get ahead of it before he actually makes a trade. Uh-huh. And you said, so do you want to do that today in case there's a trade tomorrow? So you okay. did yeah, yes, okay. it's yes, that's, yeah, well, that's the back and forth. Yes. Or still react to the game. I said, maybe, let, maybe let's be prepared to start a bracket in the final segment as, a, as what we in the business call a tease. Yep, and he said that works, and then we ended up saying, "Okay, well, let's let's wait." But he scooped yeah. us. Howie scooped us again. I I think there's a part of Howie that probably made this deal because he knew that he was going to get it in before Quackatology. I think he's that. <laughs> well, effective. my wife, yeah, she's not watching right now, um, but she can attest that. So for twelve, so Howie's been in charge for eleven of these twelve years, and I can't tell you how many times I've had something planned. I've had either a story I'm working on or something I've prepped to do, and then Howie does something. Uh, and we kind of joke in our house that Howie controls our schedule often. Yeah. Uh, you know, there was a Halloween one year when they traded for Jay Ajayi. Uh, there was, um, you know, there's been contract extensions and big trades and cuts and 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 different things that have. Uh, and there have been minor transactions, admittedly, that I've I've rerouted You've plans turned for. Turned into major transactions, yes. yes. Uh, but yeah, Howie, uh, Howie, I don't know if Howie's watching this right now, but Howie does control my life in a certain way. I think he probably relishes that to some degree. You know what? And I relish that to a certain degree. I, I love this you job. relish that he controls your life. No, I love the dynamic nature of this job. I get okay. my my juices flow when there's a big move when, when the Eagles are in the news about something. Yeah. I love relevancy. I love big topics and Kevin Byard is a big topic. Yeah. So let's, let's unpack this a little bit. Um, Kevin Byard is 30 years old. As you said, he is a two time all pro or all pro player uh, that those all pros came in 2017 mm-hmm. and 2021. He has a history as a playmaker. Only Xavier Howard has more interceptions in the NFL since 2017, then Bayard's 29, 27 rather. Um, no interceptions this season. He is extremely durable, has not missed a game in his entire NFL career. So there's like a, a, Malcolm, a Malcolm Jenkins-esque angle to that. The Eagles have not been afraid to uh, pay a low price for veterans who are 30 years old or more. Um, obviously, they think he still has enough left in the tank here. It's going to be a secondary of... Old guys with Darius Slay and James Bradbury. Now, there is there is a, a part of a pocket of this football fandom world in Murfreesboro, Tennessee, mm-hmm. Zach, that is just hooting and hollering over this move because this is the Middle Tennessee State dream safety tandem. Kevin Byard leaves in 2016. A young pip Reed Blankenship enters in 2017, and now those two are going to be starting together. For the Philadelphia Eagles. Yes. Uh, I made Shout this. out to all the fans in Murfreesboro. Have you ever been to Murfreesboro? I have. So have I. <laughs> you have? I have. Under what context? We played a, co- a club baseball game there. Oh, look at Go that Diggs. flex. Yeah, about a six-hour drive. Look at that flex. Okay. I think we took that down. I think we I think we won that doubleheader. Okay. Uh, Shout out to you. Parkman, who I know uh, How's their baseball watches. team there? Their club well, baseball I don't know. team. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think it was a good, a good... I don't really remember. I, I think if I can recall... I feel like uh, Phil Samich pitched a good game in one of those two games. His Shout change up, Phil great changeup for okay. Phil. Yeah, I uh, took my sister on college visits. Okay, and we didn't visit Middle Tennessee. I was going to say that no. I wouldn't have expected but, Jenna to be n- nothing yeah. against Jenna, but or Middle Tennessee State. We drove from Nashville to Atlanta. Okay, and I think uh, I think we stopped for. We stopped for barbecue in either did Murfreesboro you wanna, did you wanna or, go into the student union? Is that or, what this is about? or Chattanooga. Um, but I would have to look at, at the map. But I, I do recall mentioning to my sister that's where the Blue Raiders play. There you go. So um uh yeah, so what a fever dream for Middle Tennessee State. Who fans. knew? You know, we spent all this time talking about the Georgia pipeline. Mm. How and who knew that the Middle Tennessee yeah. 
I always thought it was Middle Tennessee State. I see MTSU, but when I Googled it, it's Middle Tennessee. Did they take out the state at some point? Maybe they did. I think we t- didn't we have a conversation about the middles, the uh, the lack of colleges. Yes, that are named we did middle? actually. Yes, yes, we've we've there's been we've already been there. Yeah, I, I think middles feel cent- I think I think middles feel slighted by centrals. To be honest with you. Like centrals get all the love. Interesting. Not, there's there there aren't that many middles. Yeah. Right. Middle feels more specific. Exactly. I mean, there's a lot of centrals. There's a central Michigan. You know, there, there's there's a lot of centrals. How many middles are there? Yeah, that's fair. Middle. Yeah. Anyway, uh, so obviously this is what has been the Eagles' position of weakness. Um, yes. On either side of the ball, Reed Blankenship dealing with a rib injury. Did not play in this game. Nick Sirianni said today that, you know, if, if Blankenship could have had a say, he would have been the one who wanted to play in this game. They notably did not put him on injured reserve, so that means it's it's not expected to be a four-game injury. Um, but aside from Blankenship, who is playing at an extremely high level, I think he's, has been one of the best players aside from the defensive line on the defense this season. Um, we've been talking about Terrell Edmonds, who has struggled. You feel bad for the guy, you know, what a great uh, viral clip he had in, in the Phillies game with, <laughs> no, with DeAndre yeah. Swift, and now he's yeah. got to go play for the Titans. Um, Sidney Brown, who played yesterday, got his first start. I, didn't, I actually didn't think he was bad, but I was just, it was just a TV copy. They need options there, obviously. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, Makai Garner's on the field. It's th- yeah. This is a team with Super Bowl aspirations. And I actually think that that's a, an, a, an important part of this is, you know, you're only trading for Kevin. Now, it's not a, it's not a huge price to pay, but... If you're trading for Kevin Byard, who is 30 years old, and you're considering picking up his $14 million option, you're doing that because you think you have a chance to win the Super Bowl. And I think that the way that they played last night was enough of a maybe of a nudge to get Howie to be like, okay, let's do this deal. This team is as good, it can be as good as I think it can be. And it was I, their best game of the season. Yeah, well, it was their best game of the season, but I disagree with you. I imagine this is something that that they they have uh that, that they had worked on before this. But then why not do it last week? Fair point. You know, they. Uh, I don't think it was probably contingent on, on this game. I don't think it was contingent. They, 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 I just yeah. think that it was, if you were watching that game sure. and you're like, okay, like this well, team yeah. can put it together a little bit. You know, maybe they, maybe they can be as good as last year's team. Maybe they can be a Super Bowl champion. Let's get the pieces. Let's get them in here. Well, that or part, maybe it's, yeah. maybe, okay, I'll pay that little yeah, extra, exactly. you know. Yeah, that part I buy. That part I buy. I, I I buy that Howie says like, all right, we're ready to load up. And I said on the show last night, and we've discussed this. The Eagles have a reservoir of draft picks, right? I think they had ten or eleven picks next year before. Yes. The do you trade. know where these two picks came from? How <laughs> sick are you? I mean, I didn't look at at these specific picks. Are they trading that? So no, I. It's a I, 2024 fifth, a 2024 yeah. sixth. The fifth came from uh, the Bucks trading up for Trey Palmer. Yes. Okay. And the sixth came from, of course, we all remember the Hugo Amadi trade. Seth. Yes, of course, I remember the Hugo Amadi trade. I remember where I was when Hugo Amadi was traded. Where were you? I was in Cleveland with you. Oof, I don't even remember that. Well, you were busy forgetting your keys in the rental car or your wallet <laughs> in the rental car. Was it that same day? It was that weekend. I was probably, you know, it was because happy then to be I the Duns and yeah. Okay, I'm trying to find my password so I can get the uh, well, ad then, reads. Well, here. then I'll, I I will be happy to do it because I made sure that 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 I, that I had it up here. Uh, <laughs> okay, and I got to tell you, uh, Kevin Byard is going to be a popular guy in Philly, and. If he wants to be incognito, or even if uh, I, I shouldn't even say if, if he wants to be incognito, if he is, if, if it's a sunny day like it is here, he gets back home, he goes to the old neighborhood, and he wants to put on some sunglasses. You know what he should wear? He should wear shady rays. Okay, gear up for the season with quality shades built to last. Our friends at Shady Rays have you covered with premium polarized shades and quick swap snow goggles. That won't break the bank. Shady Rays is an independent sunglasses company that offers an unrivaled product that's just as good as any expensive pair we've worn. Durable frames and world-class optics for all outdoor adventures. And if you're into winter sports, their quick swap snow lenses switch easily from full sun to low light. Don't let changing light conditions slow you down to the slopes. 
when, oh, I'm sorry, slow you down on the slopes when all you need is Shady Ray snow goggles. Uh, check out Shady Ray's website for all the, the, all the different styles. I was on there last week. I was looking at them. It's so hard to choose from because there's so many good styles on there. And you know what? What? If you lose your your pair, which you are wont to do, I am. just like you forgot the those keys or your wallet in the, in the car. Didn't I not uh, forget them? They were just in a different yeah. pocket or a different pan yeah, pocket. Yeah, you were a little yeah. scattered. Um, the, a Shady Rays told us that they will send you a brand new pair, no questions asked. You can't get service better than that. Wear your Shady Rays with confidence because they have your back long after your purchase. If you don't love your Shady Rays, exchange for a new pair or return them for free within 30 days. There's no risk when you shop. Their team always has your back with personal and fast support. Exclusively for our listeners, Shady Rays is giving out an amazing deal for the season. So make sure you listen to this. Go to ShadyRays.com and use code PHLY for $50. Oh, I'm sorry, 50% off two plus pairs of polarized sunglasses. Try for yourself the shades rated five stars by over 250,000 people. Meanwhile, Zach, the NFL season is going strong, and DraftKings Sportsbook is hooking new customers up with an offer that's even stronger. Bet five bucks on any game this week to score $200 instantly in bonus bets, and DraftKings isn't stopping there. All customers can take advantage of a sweetener offer every game day this October. Who you got in the game tonight? San Francisco. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I mean, for against Even the spread, with the what points. is it, six and a half or yeah. something like that? Although I was wrong about the Patriots' bills yesterday. So was I. Yes. Mm. You can find that out on all PHL. You know what I did hit on yesterday? I don't know if you watched the pregame show, but I hit on my Josh Job under two and a half tackles that was on DraftKings Sports. Did not take like a defensive snap. Money. Did not take defensive snap. Good for you. Get in on the game day greatness. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use code PHLY. New customers can score $200 instantly in bonus bets when you bet five on the NFL. That's code PHLY, only on DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www.1800gambler.net. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text hope ny 467 369 In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly. On behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort in Kansas, licensee partner Golden Nugget Lake Charles in Louisiana, 21 and older age varies by jurisdiction. Void in Ontario. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. See sportsbook.draftkings.com slash football terms for eligibility and deposit restrictions, terms, and responsible gaming resources. Um, okay. Before we sort of pivot to the game from last night, let's let's stick on Bayard for just, just a little bit longer. Do you expect that it's going to be just Blankenship and Bayard? Do you think Bayard's going to be ready to play? I mean, I know this is all very early going, but um, do you think this is more about fixing the top of the depth chart, or is it about maybe they still want Sidney Brown to be involved somehow? Well, so or it does Sidney Brown. That's what I was about to, to say. Yeah, I I actually think Sidney Brown could maybe be a slot option now, uh, and this is something that they get him on the field. And they get him adjusted. He 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 learns different roles. But my guess is, well, I have a strong expectation you're going to see Blank and Chip and Bayard as the two starters here. Sure. And I don't think Sidney Brown's just going to be a reserve, even though they do like Sidney Brown on on special teams. I know they brought back Josiah Scott last week. Bradley Roby's not on IR, so that makes you think that he's going to be back within three weeks. So the Eli Eagles, Ricks popped a little bit last Eli, night too. Yeah, good point. Uh, but I can see them using Sidney Brown situationally. In that slot, maybe in in three safety packages, if they like that. I certainly think this gives Sean Desai a little more to work with in terms of uh, he he's already shown creativity. He shows he likes to rotate, uh, but I think this is very much about the top of the depth chart. And this is saying this is our biggest weakness. How can we plug it? And you plug it with with someone who is uh, secure, someone who is uh, established. And there's probably an ease of transition in place because of that experience. And because you've got AJ Brown here, um, you know, it, it all it all seems a little bit too perfect. We got a celebrity in the chat, by the way. Mount Joy. Oh, I see that. You know, I was going to make the joke that uh, the Eagles have also acquired country music in this deal because they just keep fleecing Nashville. But <laughs> I was I don't know. And I, I didn't I didn't quite land there yet. No joke. But I'm very happy to see. I mean, this honestly in the chat on my drive to Penn State. I passed by Mountain Joy, mm. and I immediately felt. You know, like, I have a picture on my phone. I haven't, I, I haven't sent this yet, but I have a picture of my phone on uh, Mountain Joy, uh, a street sign, 
somewhere okay. else in, in New York okay. from when I used to go back home. So I imagine Mount Joy. Now has I gotta been, send it. I imagine Mount. I imagine that Mount Joy has driven through Tennessee and seen Middle Tennessee State University, where the Eagles' new safety combination is from. And I, I, I do expect. But maybe this, in the sleeping bed at that point. Maybe yes, in the sleeping bed yeah. at that point. Uh, yeah, you you mentioned the the, the Titans connection. A.J. Brown, Zach Cunningham. I mean, the Eagles have guys who can welcome. <laughs> it's funny to. I mean, you're right. Just. Zach funny. Cunningham I played know, 100% know, of the snaps know, yesterday. Just, Zach Cunningham's a $50 million know, linebacker. I know. He's, just I mean, like, he's come like, come like the literal afterthought on defense. But yeah, that's fine. It's he's true. not a literal afterthought on defense. He literally played more than any <laughs> linebacker yesterday, okay? Maybe he's that's your fair. afterthought. He's my front thought. His he's your front thought? Yeah. I mean, he's Howie's afterthought. It's. That's the position of afterthoughts. Yeah, but he's a Zach who plays. Oh, uh, that's true. I forgot. He, about, I, he, you know, I forgot about the Zach, and he spells it the right way. He spells it the right way. Zach Ertz approves. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, do you think the Eagles are done? I never say let's never. Say, with let's Howie. say, barring injury, yeah. that they need a replacement for next weekend. I think for the most part, I can't see them keep giving up draft picks here. I think the Julio transaction uh, gives them. Another able player at wide receiver. <laughs> you're very. You love, I mean, yeah, you were impressed by that one yard cat, by that one catch for three yards, a little more than I was. But I'm impressed by the presence of Julio. Yes. That uh, that photo of Julio, AJ, Devontae, yeah. Ocho Cinco, and Deshaun Johnson. Deshaun, Deshaun Jackson. Jackson. Deshaun yes. Jackson. <laughs> yes. How would you? How it, let's projecting the rest of their active players' careers. Okay. How would you rank those five guys in terms of what you would expect their final? Okay, so like. if 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 we're on the PHLY Eagles show in 50 years, uh, I mean, <laughs> who's going to be wild? I mean, two octogenarians just. <laughs> we have a loyal audience. Remember they, when this audience has migrated with us before? I remember <laughs> where I was when they traded for Hugo Amati. And I'm like, is that Kirk Cousins? I don't remember. Is that Kirk Cousins talking about the trade? I don't the remember tree? where yeah. I was yesterday. Yeah, we're going to have Roe Hitch children um, watching us. Uh, so. Yeah, so in, well, let's say 30 years, and we look back and we say the wide receiving core. Uh, I'm going Julio Jones, number one. A.J. Brown, number two. Chad Johnson, number three. Devontae Smith, number four. Deshaun Jackson, number five. Interesting. Sorry, to, I, you know, I, I spoke to Deshaun. Uh, I was in the Madden Cruiser. You're going to be hearing from his mom. I was in the Madden Cruiser. Shout out to EA Sports there. Uh, and I'm going to have a Q&A up this week with the uh, with Deshaun. Deshaun's one of the most electric players that I covered. Like, it, the most electric player that I covered. Deshaun is a rare threat. I mean, you saw Tyreek Hill last night. That's the type of player that Deshaun was to a certain extent. But when you just look at the overall careers, uh, I will, I mean, A.J. Brown, I think A.J. Brown's going to wear a gold jacket. I I put up a tweet yesterday. Teammates, it was. Uh, 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 I'm sorry, not yesterday. Uh, last week with Julio Jones and AJ Brown together, and I said teammates in Nashville, teammates <laughs> in Philly, and then I put question mark or I put teammates in Canton question mark because I think AJ Brown's gonna be in Canton one day. So uh, two things here. One is that how Canton works? They're out there teammates. That's a team. Oh sure, yes, yeah. You're part of the the uh, the Hall of Fame fraternity. I think you, we, would you call them teammates though? Um, the Brotherhood. Okay, I don't, I don't know. know. Yeah, like Gary Anderson and uh, Jerry Rice are teammates. <laughs> yeah. Your handshake, right? It's like, yeah. Second of all, I like the way that you framed it. That like <laughs> you were you were saying your own tweet as evidence of a thing that could happen. So as, therefore, like, as because I for, tweeted out, it's going to happen. Yes, like, yes. I put out a tweet. And <laughs> it's primary source, right? <laughs> yes, yeah. that's good. And, you know, well, so it'd be funny if I was like, I saw a tweet last week. And then you're like, wait, <laughs> you put that out. That was yours. Yeah, that's true. Uh, so in any event, uh, that's no knock on on Deshaun. I think Devontae is going to have a really good career. Yeah, so you're, you're talking about the fifth in a group of five Pro Bowl, all pro caliber players. I think you're underrating Deshaun a little bit. Oh, I'm not underrating Deshaun. I mean, Deshaun is special. Deshaun was special. I think it's a lot. I mean, I like Devontae Smith, too. It's a lot to project him to have a better career than Deshaun Jackson. How many thousand-yard seasons did Deshaun have? Four? Deshaun had five. Five. Okay. Yeah. So, Devontae Smith already has one. He's 24 years old. 
he's uh, yeah. You know what? I, I I understand now why you're down on Deshaun. He only had three <laughs> sixty catch seasons. <laughs> Did you see Nelson Aguilar with that <laughs> touchdown yesterday? By the way, I was going to text you and Shil Kapadia. You are you are, you are anti yards per reception. You no, do not, not like deep threats. You only want no. I'm not Deshaun compilers. is Deshaun is a special player. Ah, I cannot take anything away from Deshaun. Yeah, I mean Deshaun. I having watched Deshaun, I feel like. It's hard for me not to take him over Devontae just because okay. he changed the shape of the offense so much. Like, to like was a, a, a one-man offense, but I don't know. Anyway, not where I thought we were going to go just yet. No. Um, otherwise, in terms of potential trade targets, like I, you know, I, I, wouldn't be, I wouldn't be blown away if they traded for another lower-level player in the secondary, a guy who could like a play slot? a little bit of safety or right. slot. Um, I think you could convince me of another linebacker. Um, you could. I don't I, think edge rusher. I don't think edge rusher either, unless somebody suffers an yeah. injury. Um, I don't think. Def- I mean, they're they're stacked at defensive tackle. O line, like maybe O line. Okay. Like if you're a little bit worried about the the injuries mounting, and I mean, I guess I guess a wide receiver is possible, but that seems unlikely. And One quick end, thing for you. Too. I don't, what about running back? Well, I was I was going to ask you this, by the way. Um, uh, Diana Rossini, the outstanding national reporter at The Athletic, uh, formerly of ESPN. Broke the terms of the trade. Yeah. Uh, she had a piece last week, or I'm sorry, over the weekend, that said the Eagles are aggressive on the phone for, or, or, or are working the phones for secondary help. But she mentioned that they're not trading Rashad Penny because they want him in case of injury. They, they know they're going to need a, a running back. Do you think that was like... A leverage play. If if you want Rashad Penny, we're not yes. looking to trade him. But you know, yes. you could be wowed. Or do you think that's a legitimate thing? I think both. Okay. I think they're not they're they're not going to give him away for free. But I think yeah, yeah it's a signal that like you know if you if you want him, you're going to have to give up a sixth. I don't know. Like, <laughs> you're going to give up Kevin Byer. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, um. I I wouldn't be I wouldn't be. I don't think they're training for a running. Back. I don't think they're training for one either. But if you yeah. know, for a uh, pick, a late round pick swap, I think that is a position that they could add to. I don't. I, I mean, mean Boston you're just Scott didn't even about, play last night. Yeah. So I think they and you have Rashad Penny as this emergency, you know, running back. I mean, if Swift, if Swift was injured, but Swift has looked so good. I mean, I mean, what running back are you trading for right now? And I, I don't think Howe is just giving up picks anymore. You know, he gave up two here. He didn't get a pick back. He he likes having inventory. Yeah, but he knows that he knows there's a comp pick windfall coming. True, true. I think what's nice about the Bayard trade is that this is the position where you thought that if they were going to give up a, a serious pick, yes. you know, uh, a fourth or they don't they don't have their own third right now, mm-hmm. but, um, but like a second for a third or something like that. Safety is the position it probably would have been, and so to address the biggest need with a real talented player for just the fifth, sixth, and Edmonds is, is pretty strong. Yeah, I hear you there. Now, I, I saw in the chat people mention, or I saw someone mention Jalen Mills. Jalen Mills could be that corner safety combo yeah. if you're looking for one. Yeah, but we'll see. Do you feel, I, uh, Jamie and I talked about this, I feel like the, the, the trade deadline's too early, especially with the, with the expanded playoff field, there's not enough teams who, who are totally out of it enough. Maybe that's what they want oh. is for I like to that. be less action. Uh, yeah, now they, they moved it back. It used to be earlier. It used mm-hmm. to be like last week what it was, and then they moved it back to around Halloween. I can see you moving it back two weeks. You don't want it too late. Like the hockey trade deadline's too late. We all know that. <laughs> because by that point, it's like you've already, you know, you're basically trading a guy just for the playoffs. Uh, it's the hockey trade deadline is almost like the baseball waiver. Uh, sure, yeah, you yeah. know, when you make like that August 18th trade, Artem Moreno gets to save a few bucks. Yeah. So I, I don't like that one, but yeah. I actually don't have a strong opinion on where it is. I just wish there were more trades. I give Howie credit. I mean, uh, I wrote a story, <laughs> I wrote a story back that. in, yeah. I, I wrote a story back in, uh, in 2011, 2011. Ah. for the New York times about never heard of it. Howie trading, uh, and in his office we spoke about it uh, i was proud of that story and that was before you saw this influx of trades what story are you not proud of oh uh, we I, I i i can give you three hours of stories that i wish could be better or that i didn't write because uh they weren't good enough but the brian kelly one 
<laughs> Brian Kilmeade was a good story at the time. I don't think it's the aged. Fawning so well. I don't think it's aged so well. But yeah, I mean, look, if if you're covering the Orange Bowl in <laughs> in 2008-2009 and Cincinnati's playing in the Orange Bowl and they have this head coach who you came, could have been you could have written about Kelsey who came from Grand Valley State in Central Michigan and he's brought Cincinnati to the Orange Bowl. This yes. is for the Post. This is for the Washington Post. I think that's a fair I see, story I see, to write. I, see, I swear I never thought the Washington Post would write about a, a poor, <laughs> poor football coach like me, Brian Kelly. Your Brian Kelly accent, yes. Oh. <laughs> mm, Zach, it's a pleasure to meet you. Would you like to meet my fam? <laughs> he didn't say that. He spoke to me in a... But it was... I, I remember going to their practice. I remember, I was blown away by all these details I was getting. And I did actually, Connor Barwin and Jason Kelsey, they were all on that Cincinnati team. If only I knew the roles that Jason Kelsey and Connor Barwin would one day play in my life. And Travis Kelsey. I don't know if, tra- I think Travis was. Wouldn't he have been a, a freshman then? No? He wasn't on the, he wasn't on the availability. <laughs> <back> then, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. He had other things to do. All right. Yes. Uh, we are like half an hour from game time for game six down at Citizens Bank Park. Might be worth just taking a little peek. Anybody uh, anybody selling? Couldn't make it down? That's what the game time app is for. Because game time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater near you with killer deals on last-minute tickets. And their best price guarantee, you can stop stressing over the tickets and start getting hyped for the fun you'll have. Flash deals and last minute tickets. Easy to find and buy tickets for every kind of event in your area. Images of seat views, lowest price guarantee, event cancellation protection, job loss protection, and more. Game time is the place for last minute ticket deals. Forget planning months in advance. Game time has deals on tickets right up to the day of the event. Get exclusive flash deals on tickets for football, basketball, baseball, concerts, comedy, theater, and more. The game time guarantee means you always will get the best price if you find tickets in the same section and row for less game time will credit you 110 percent of the difference snag the tickets without the stress with game time download the game time app create an account and use code phly for 20 dollars off your first purchase terms apply again create an account and redeem with code phly for 20 dollars off download game time today last minute tickets lowest price guaranteed and if you look at what I'm wearing today, this is a PHL. I'm always my looking laptop at what you're here. wearing, Zach. This is a PHLY sweatshirt, a hoodie, comfortable. I like the way it looks. I like the the uh, logo. Great job by our art department here uh, at All City. I and got PHLY. the same one last week. And you can get this uh, on PHL on allphly.com. You can go to the, the PHLY locker, but. If you are a diehard member, you get discounted merchandise like this. You also get a free shirt. You get exclusive content, okay, uh, including the email exchange that we had last week. And then PHLY is also has some of these great events. Uh, Charlie O'Connor, uh, our outstanding Flyers reporter, mentioned that the Flyers, there's a PHLY Flyers tailgate on Saturday morning from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. in Lot F. In Lot F at the Wells Fargo Center, free drinks, giveaways, uh, good meals. So check that out as well. Yeah, you see that up there. So uh, a lot of perks to being a diehard member and a PHLY consumer. All right, Zach. Um, We'll have a little bit more time tomorrow to unpack some of the stuff from last night that uh, we might want to. But because, you know, the Eagles have traded for Kevin Byard, and after last night's performance from that defense and Sean Desai, I mean, can this be like a top five defense? I mean, Sean Desai deserves so much credit. What he is doing with this personnel in the back end, the Dolphins, like I understand Eagles fans are fixated on the Eagles as, as, as we are covering the team. The Dolphins don't have games like that. Teams don't do that to the Dolphins. Correct. Sean Desai did that to the Dolphins. So a top five defense... I don't know if statistically I'd say top five. You know, they look, they had games like they had against Washington where where they struggled. Not every game is going to be perfect. But I, I think overall this season, the game plans that he's put together, the adjustments he's made on a week-to-week basis in terms of the game plan and the personnel, 
I, Sean Desai, he, he should be on these head coaching lists, number one, okay? And he is the coordinator that Eagles fans have been clamoring for, in my opinion. Yeah. I mean, they blitz when they need to the blitz. They're, they disguise. Um, there's creativity. Uh, he says he wants to be palpable. They were palpable. And I don't mean to be simplistic here, by the way. I never, I, I like being nuanced, not simplistic. But I remember vividly doing the show with you after the Super Bowl last year where you said, it's all about offense. It comes down to offense. Well, from a defensive perspective, maybe it just comes down to your front. Because when your front can have the presence that they have, and they were into his face last night. Now, I understand Miami was missing their left tackle, their center, and then they lost their left guard in the in the first yes. half. But, man, the, you can see why the Eagles invest on the line of scrimmage, and that changed everything. But still, you know, Tyreek Hill runs fast. He was held to eight yards per reception. The Eagles kept him in front of him for the most part besides that, that one Huge play. difference in the yards after the catch yep. that, from what the Dolphins usually get, um, and that was a huge part of the game. I, I actually think um, crediting the defensive line is, I mean, their defensive line is unbelievable. Mm-hmm. It's, I th- it's better than last year's, which is wild. Uh, I don't think I can remember seeing a better defensive line week in and week out. I think that is a little bit simplistic in this game because I think w- what Sean Desai did in the back seven, and sometimes it was just a back six, um, was really impressive and was, and was part of the story of this game. Now, there were, there were a few things that I think the Dolphins invited upon themselves. Okay. Um, I thought I thought they tried to run the ball a little bit too much earlier in the game. But they're the top um, running team in the in the NFL. I know, but it was clear very early. And I know you want to stick with it, but yes. it was clear early on that that the Eagles had that well taken care of. Um, and why do you it, think that was? Because they were so well prepared. I mean, Hassan Reddick, like on yeah. those, those two early TFLs, like he he was. It was like that was good coaching. Great I think. point. Great point. Because um, he knew exactly where to be, and and he was ready for it, and. Um, we talked about like that's where that's where they run the ball is on the edges and and the Eagles are good there and and Josh Sweat had an awesome game. Nick yep. Sirianni said today that he's the guy who got their player of the game on defense. I thought he was awesome. There was that one play where he was like out in space, sort of in coverage, and then still made the tackle in the oak. Well, like course. he he pushed Tyree Kill away. Uh, he, you know he kept contained. Um, yeah, that's nice. I'm taking a whiff. Yeah, I, I'm aware. <laughs> <Okay>. I, <laughs> I mean, look, I, because I, you've long said that, that Josh Hill deserves to be in space covering Tyreek Hill. Those things are not connected because I've said Josh Sweat's one of the best players, one of the best defensive ends in the NFL, one of the best edge rushers yeah. in, in, the, in the NFL. But I don't disagree with you about that. I, I only ever disagreed with you like six years ago. OK, well, some people see things before they happen. Okay. Right. Yeah. I mean, the, the time fine. to buy stock is not when it's at its highest. The time yeah, to buy stock good. is when that's, no one's that's interested. That's the best stock yeah. purchase you've ever made, I believe. Well, that's not the best stock purchase I've ever made. But um. no, money bags over here. <laughs> uh, but it's that, funny. You know, I I, um, I went up to uh, Brandon Spano, our owner, uh, a couple weeks ago. And I said, I don't usually think I, I, I never thought I'd say this, but thank you so much for paying Zach Berman a hundred million dollars. <laughs> That is a reference to that is a reference to uh, to Nick Sirianni going to Jeffrey Lurie and saying thank you for paying AJ Brown 100 million dollars. Uh, I appreciate you comparing me to AJ Brown. I think that's a little bit of a stretch. I need to literally. Up, I need to up my performance. I, I mean, I don't want to get into our internal numbers, but the the top story that's been written so far is by Bo Wolf. Okay, so. It gives me something to shoot for. I, I, I know the number I, I need to try to go for every time I write. Um, but I'm not surprised. Bo's always been, is, and always been outstanding in that regard. Uh, but uh, as, as, as we were saying, Josh Sweat was terrific in the running game. But I thought Hassan Reddick in particular, I'm glad you mentioned that. You get paid for sacks. And he's made his, his living as a pass rusher. But the what, the effect that he had in the running game in the running game last night was huge. I think that that what you saw last night was like if if you were to ask me what uh, like what good coaching on defense is, that was it because they were so well prepared for so many of the the little wrinkles you might expect from the Dolphins. They, uh, you know, Sirianni talked about that they were sort of reemphasizing you know violence over the course of the week. Like let's 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 make ourselves be known. They rallied to the ball really, really impressively last night. Uh, they were physical, 
and the times when they were beat were because it was just they were out talented right but also this is the conversation we've had for a long time and it's part of the conversation we had after the super bowl about maybe de- against the best offenses in the league maybe defense doesn't matter try to do something different hmm. and break your tendencies and this was a big tendency breaking game for the eagles we haven't had a chance to watch the all 22 yet but just from some of the the charting services they were uh like 91 percent zone in this game they that like by far their yeah. lowest percentage of men for any game this season uh under sean desai it was i think their second lowest blitz rate, blitz rate yeah. in this game they came out early in those those five two base fronts with just four defensive backs five guys up front and then it was they were sort of disguising which one of those guys was going to drop yep. into coverage. You know, there were, we saw Brandon Graham dropping into like the middle of the zo- uh, middle zone of the field. Um, they did things much differently than they have done all year long. And for him to be able to do that, for everybody to know where they're supposed to be, still be assignment sound, given all the turnover they've had in the secondary against that offense, is like astounding. It's it, it's it's so impressive, and and I cannot think of a a more impressive like coordinating performance than that you're correct regarding the zone and Sidney Brown mentioned this and I believe Chris Collinsworth might have said this on the broadcast last night that Tua is a spot thrower and Sidney Brown said like they they knew going into the game that they just had to play the spot and they had to keep the guys in front of them try to get them to to dump off and wrap up and tackle and it's interesting. That's kind of the the Vic Fangio blueprint there, right? To, to limit the big plays, uh, to keep them in front of you, to try to make them go on these long extended drives. Sean Desai, we mentioned he's a Vic Fangio disciple. I know there was a world in which uh, Vic Fangio could have been the Eagles defensive coordinator had Jonathan Gannon been hired earlier. But <laughs> Sean Desai is not a consolation prize. Sean Desai is a darn good defensive coordinator who looks to be on track to be a head coach in this league. Yeah, really impressive. And we talked about how the Eagles against good quarterbacks over the past, you know, two years, three years under Nick Sirianni have have just surrendered big offensive performances. That was against the, what came in as the best offense in the league. Yeah. And that was the uh, sixth best performance by success rate of any performance from the Eagles defense over the course of the Nick Sirianni era. And the, those other games were against Sam Darnold, uh, Jake Fromm, Ryan Tannehill, and Matt Ryan twice. Well, Matt Ryan, sorry, buddy. I'm sorry he's taking that stray there. Jake Fromm, I mean, we can get that. Matt Ryan's a Glennon good. played two in that game, so, you know. Yeah, Matt Ryan's a good quarterback. Yeah, well, yeah, that's fine. I mean, over the course of his career, maybe not last year. Yeah, not in those two games. That's true. Okay. All right. Uh, before we get to the rest of the show, Zach, one last little ad to tell you about, and that's our friends at FOCO. FOCO is a leading manufacturer of sports and entertainment merchandise with a product line that includes apparel, accessories, toys, collectibles, novelty items, and more. It is the best officially licensed gear for all sports and fandoms. It's football and tailgating season. Overalls, hoodies, hats, sunglasses, bags, everything you need for a game. FOCO has hooked PHLY up and provided awesome pieces for our sets. FOCO always has our back for Philly sports, and they have yours too. Get the best gear around by using the link in our description. For all non-presale items, use the promo code PHLY for 10% off. And then, uh, yeah, make sure you check out all, all PHLY. We, we, mentioned it, it, we mentioned earlier becoming a diehard member. It has a lot of perks. We mentioned the tailgate. We mentioned the gear. Make sure you check that out. Uh, I just want to give an update on Jalen Hurts. Okay. Because I, I know we're pretty deep into the show. That's probably what that would have led the show if not for the trade. Uh, this is what Nick Sirianni said about it. And, and so to to update our audience, uh, I'm, I'm sure you watched the post game show last night or listened uh, today. And he had a brace on his knee that he put on during the game. He was clearly dealing with something. He didn't think it was an issue. He said the injury did not occur during the game. So we can speculate maybe it was on that run against the Rams when he ran to the right side, but he's clearly dealing with something here. Uh, Nick Sirianni was asked, what's the update on Jalen Hurts' knee? I'll I'll read Sirianni's answer verbatim. Quote, seemed like he was in good spirits and good today. We'll see later in the week of of how he's feeling. I know that he battled through being uncomfortable yesterday. He can answer some of those questions as far as how he felt and all those different things. 
Um, so there is, you know, there was some discomfort, but this doesn't seem to be an injury that is going to cause him to miss time. I think that the Eagles probably would have um, framed it in such a way if that was in question. But my guess is it's something that he's just going to be dealing with. I don't know the severity of it. Uh, it is, it, it's not something to, to dismiss. When your starting quarterback is playing with a leg injury or knee injury, however you want to frame it, uh, it's, there's, it's something. It's not nothing. It's something. And especially someone who moves the way Jalen does. As tough as he is, this is something we're going to have to monitor here. The bye week is three weeks away, but they have Washington this weekend coming up. They have Dallas the weekend after that. Uh, so certainly pay attention to that. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely not nothing. It's mm -hmm. the most important player on yep. the team. And, you know, we've been talking about he doesn't look the yep. same. It's it's Yeah, been you were all on it from the beginning, by the way. Kind of clear. Uh, last night there was that that run down the left sideline where he, he, like, comes up gimpy, uh, and he has to get a, an IV at halftime. He wears the brace. Um, he's going to play, mm -hmm. but... I mean, it's funny that this is, you know, 45 minutes into the show and we're just not yeah. talking about the injury to the starting quarterback. But, yeah, I mean, it's definitely a, it's definitely a concern. It is. And, uh, you know, it's the type of thing, too, that even if he's playing with it, like I think back to two years ago, he's playing with the ankle injury. And we find out after the season that, like, it was really affecting him more than he let on, right? Uh, last year he played through that shoulder uh, or – However, the clap, you know, clap, that area of of his body, and he had a superb Super Bowl, but it was something he was pushing through. I don't know if this injury now is to the severity of those two, but this is something that Jalen is playing through, and you can see it in the way that he was jogging off the field. You can see it in the way he was moving, and uh, it's it's something that we will need to watch. And it hasn't. I don't know if it's affected their play calling. I mean, certainly Jalen's still still running, but perhaps it's affecting the way that Jalen's running or the effectiveness of him as a runner. I th and I think it's fair to say, like, let's let's calm yeah. down on the called runs a little bit. Okay. Um, yeah. We'll see if they do that. They haven't already, but yeah. yeah, I think. I mean, he still made some really nice plays with his legs in this yeah. game for sure. Like a third down in the red zone, you don't need to run on QB draw. Probably yeah. not, or yeah. or the first agree. down, two yeah. plays prior. Okay, I would agree with that. Now we, we don't know if he's checking to those himself. That's that's a possibility, but and now the thing yeah. is, the Eagles were really good in the red zone yesterday. So I'm, I'm after not the first them. one, but after yes. the first yes. one, yeah. Um, but I I thought in terms of Jalen moving the touchdown pass to AJ, like that's that's what you want Jalen to do. You want him to move to buy time, but he doesn't necessarily need to be the sixty yard runner that he's been in the past while dealing with something on his lower body here. You had a uh, you had an opinion following last night's game Zach that uh, well, you know you're not you're, you're a nuanced man you're not necessarily nuanced a, goose. Uh, yeah. you are a nuanced goose you're not necessarily trying to uh, come out with bombast but yeah. you thought that this one potentially deserved it. I thought last night was the best win the best regular season win of the Knicks Sirianni era. And the other games that I could point to, I thought the Dallas win last year before the bye was really strong. That was a good Dallas team. It was at home. The Eagles imposed their will on them in the ground. Remember that long drive where they ran, 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 and then threw the touchdown pass to Devontae Smith. I thought the Minnesota win week two last year was good really one. strong. Um, I thought the, I mean, not in terms of the quality of the, uh, of the opponent, but I thought the Denver game in 2021. Country City Fumble. Well, yeah, it was a huge win. Uh, I thought they doing the big balls dance. Yes, exactly. Uh, from the Fab Five, remember? And uh, yeah. prefacing or uh, uh, previewing the Phillies season to come. I thought the Saints win that year was a strong win as well. But I thought all in all, this was the best win, regular season win, of the Sirianni era, considering how complete of a, of a performance it was. Now, there were two bad turnovers um, that they need to rectify. He is turning the ball over too much. But I thought they ran the ball up when they needed to run it. I thought that, I mean, A.J. Brown was electric in the passing game. Dallas Goddard was really strong in the passing game. Jalen had some strong throws. We mentioned the defense. I thought it was a well-coached game. I thought they were prepared 
I didn't think there were many egregious decisions. I mean, there were things we can second guess. What did you make of the, the, the officiating, the disparity there? Yeah, I mean, clearly, it, now it's it was, it was what, 10 penalties to zero? Now there were two offsetting penalties. Two offsetting, penalty. right. And I think mm-hmm. that I think six of the Dolphins' penalties mm-hmm. were pre-snap. Is that yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So uh, I, 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 I think, think that Eagles, just means the refs were, were, were sort of letting them play a little sure. bit, right? I think the Eagles were fortunate on, on a few. I, I thought the roughing the passer penalty was... That was a was, bad call. You thought that was a bad call? Yeah, I thought it was a bad call. I thought call. that was like a borderline one. I mean, Jalen had thrown it. Wilkins did hit him, but I thought that was it's one sort where of you, can, like, you can let him play. You know, Jalen yeah. uh, sort of deserves that one after yeah. after a while. That's one he's, sure. he's not gotten the beneficiary of over the course of yeah. time. So, it, you know, it evens out. But that one in particular was, was I would not have thrown a flag. I thought the Eagles got away with a few. You know, Bradbury looked like he, he, he got away with uh, yes. a face mask. And or, the Cunningham one on the Slay interception, I think you could have called that. Okay. Uh, and that would have changed the game, obviously. Oh, for sure. For sure. But I, I just think, look, I was wrong. I thought the Dolphins were going to win this game. Now, the interesting thing is on our show the other day, when you said, how are the Eagles going to win this game? Or how can the Eagles win this game? I said, what, by the line of scrimmage and being the more physical, tougher team. And I thought they were the more physical, tougher You're team. You're pulling a bow right now. No, but I, I I predicted the Eagles to lose, and I stand by that. And I was yeah, wrong. But you're and that's also why, thrown in, but I also said that's this is why I won. I had egg on my face, and and Nick Sirianni walking off off the off the field. Um, he specifically said, "Stop doubting the Eagles." And I asked uh, Sirianni, "I'm glad he's listening." Yeah, yeah. Uh, do you feel the Eagles have been doubted? Do you feel this team has has been doubted? And he said, "Quote: I think we kind of went into that game an underdog. You try to block out the noise that's being talked about you, whether that's good or bad." Um, but he, he did say he heard kind of the discussion going into the game and he also acknowledged they'd given reason for skepticism. And he acknowledged that they like to make this up sometimes this, this stuff up too. He's yeah. like, well, we'll take whatever we can get, whether it's real or we make it up. But look, I mean, you've covered the team for the past seven years and then previously for five years before that, correct? Something like that. I mean, I'm, I'm trying to be accurate here. What's the exact number? You know the exact number. I don't know the exact number. How do you know the head. exact number? This it's is because your, it's, it doesn't define, I it doesn't define me as a human you. being. Well, it probably defines me a little too much as a human being. I've covered this team for 12 years now, okay? Uh, so I've covered every game except for the COVID year for 12 years. Uh, and I could tell you who I thought would win or lose in each of those games. And no, I definitely could not. Both you and I, people who I, th- I think are reasonable have a, have a reasonable view of of the Eagles. We're not outlandish. We're not trying to get attention with our picks, right? We both picked the Eagles to lose this game. Yeah. And we were wrong. The Eagles didn't just win. They won convincingly. They won, like, they were by far the superior team yesterday. And I do think Nick Sirianni, ha- he, he deserves the strut. He earned it. They earned it. So I was wrong. And I also I would think say that, that Nick, if been- you're watching... I, I I mean Nick made that, that I know that he is that, yeah. that thing yesterday where he he pointed to the camera and he was talking about the yes don't the, ban the quarterback it. Yeah. snack if Nick, everybody could do it everybody would do it if you were watching I was wrong about the result I was not wrong about your team but I was wrong about the result I thought the Eagles were 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 a, a heavyweight before this and I believe that they are even more of a heavyweight now well I think it's also um, I think they could use a little bit of swag. Like the, I don't know that they've been like fully carrying themselves with a little bit of like the chest so? out enough. Okay. So I think I think there's maybe a part of that for for Sirianni. Okay. You know, let's. I mean, Sirianni's been carrying like, himself with swag. <laughs> well, he typically does. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah, I mean, not yeah. after the not after yeah. the salad game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Nick and I, if I was a head coach, I, I'm like, and I I love Nick's like sideline decorum. I'd probably be a little bit different. Um, yeah, I would imagine so. But I I like that Nick is authentically himself. I vividly remember. I was in Jamestown, New York. I was sitting in the passenger seat with Tom Langworthy, uh, his best friend growing up. And Tom said that uh, that you know Nick's just going to be him, and he 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 knows that they're going to praise him if he wins and criticizes him if he loses. So he's going to do it his way, and that has been the case. Nick has done it his way. Now, listen, I, I think the Eagles were clearly the better team yesterday. I do think that there were some things that could have gone in a different direction and, and would have sure. changed the flow. Tyreek Hill doesn't bit. drop that ball. Tyreek yeah. Hill doesn't drop that ball. If they throw a flag on on uh, the Darius Lane interception. I, I, I mean, mean they, I think that was like, I don't think that was as. I think if you look across the NFL, that probably gets thrown 35% of the time, maybe even more. Okay. If And, and I think the case that like if Slay doesn't come over and pick it, the flag gets thrown, I think might be correct. 
Um, How many bets do you make with 35% probability? I didn't say I was betting on it. I'm okay. just, I'm saying just asking. It could have yeah. been thrown. I mean, okay. the refs in the league are bad. They, like, they're any any anything could have been. Goodell catch a stray here. Goodell doesn't catch strays. Goodell, <laughs> I, I, Roger gets him right between the eyes, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, he he knows. Ro- I know that Roger watches, and and it's. Sort I think of Roger like Goodell's going to good it's job. Sort of like a self-flagellating thing for him because he knows that it's uh, that we're going to come after him. You think he's done a good job for the NFL? For the owners, well, for the which league. is his job. His I mean, job for, is to make money for the owners. The league's pretty popular. I think everyone's doing well. The league was pretty popular before uh, he was around, and the league will be popular after he dies. The, the league has grown under his commissionership. I mean, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And the league would have grown on, under anyone's commissionership. Look, we don't need to to like go down this this rabbit hole, but we've had this conversation. Should we do before. the? Uh, should we give him a standing ovation for getting every game played in 2020 <laughs> no, again? No, like, my, what, a, what an unbelievable accomplishment no, my, that was! Thank you, is, Roger. How else would we have recovered from the pandemic? My were it point not for is, you? we're all part of this industrial complex. Like I, I make my living based on the NFL, so that's 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 my only point. That's your only point. Okay, that's, that's my only point. I'm not okay, like okay. defending. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't think Roger needs you to defend him. He certainly doesn't. I don't think. Yeah, he certainly doesn't. And, and 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 nor am I. I'm just saying that the league is popular, and I appreciate the league's popularity because it allows me to sit here and talk about the league with you. Okay, we don't need to get into the full. We can <laughs> we can save that for March. <laughs> or let's save that for May. We have free agency in March. Yeah. We have draft in April. We're gonna have to fill May, June, and July. So let's or early July. So let's let's. Let's have like a, a Goodell week in May. <laughs> you know? Okay. Yeah. Early June. We'll do Early, Goodell. Yeah, Maybe for exactly. my birthday, you can give me a Goodell day. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. Anything else that you want to make sure we, we touch on today instead of waiting until tomorrow for, for this game? From this game? No. I, I mean, A.J. Brown was, is just awesome, right? We can, we can, we can get into A.J. Brown more what later. What do you make of the, uh, the Jalen Phillips uh, Eagles thing? If, if you make the sack, you can do that. Yeah, I was cracking up at uh, uh, Rich Hoffman's newsletter from today. Let's plug that bad boy again. Absolutely, make sure that you're you're getting that in your inbox. Uh, I I believe the phrase or the the line he used was an eventful night for that loser. <laughs> well, he and I can disagree on that one. Well, because Phillips, he then tries to sort of blow up the end of the game knee. I mean, I, I, I don't know. He isn't. He, he's an intense player. He 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 had a sack. He's allowed to do that. Yeah, but he then then he did then didn't do anything else the rest of the game. You know, yeah. if you do that, you're allowed to then get made fun of. The threshold for you making fun of someone is not very high. <laughs> Trust me, I true. know. I've, I've I've sat next to you now for five that years. That is definitely the true. The threshold is not very I, high. Uh, yes. Before the Bayard uh, trade happened, I, we may have led the podcast with uh, Zir- Sirianni's Zoom <laughs> presser today because <laughs> I was absolutely losing it. Uh, from a back and forth from a uh, uh, a reporter that you know the, the, the connection wasn't great. I was just I, I mean I, I I might still lose it. It doesn't take a lot to make you laugh either. Well, that's true. Which really says a lot about your comedy, doesn't it? About my company? That it doesn't comedy. Mean, comedy. That well, it's hard for me to get. Yeah, it's hard for me to get you to laugh. Right, so that's easy. True. I'm an easy laugher. And whoa! <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna push back here. Okay, you laugh. At out of him, but you laugh at people more than you laugh with people. That's not true. Oh, yes. It's both. You, you know, this podcast, you typically laugh at me. Yeah. Uh, I think we laugh together quite yeah. often. Uh, I was yeah, laughing with okay. Jamie last night okay, about the, yeah. the commenters calling him uh, looking like an unhoused person. <laughs> we only had a good time with that. Yeah. Laughing, my, laughing at myself for the ugly shirt I was wearing. Yeah, that, that, that's, that's, that's not the finest in your collection. <laughs> no, I really, and it didn't come through as Kelly yeah. Green on this. Uh, like, yeah, that, yeah. In you person, have, it looked Kelly Green, yeah. and on the screen, it did not. Yeah, you're not really a... Uh, a boxy shirt, and bad job. You're not a fashion connoisseur. What is that supposed to mean? You're not a fashion connoisseur. I mean, look, we, yeah. <laughs> Go to hell. <laughs> Do you think you're a? Do you think you're a a, a real fashionable individual? What? You're the guy. Who, I mean, are you kidding me? <laughs> are, are you offended by that? Yeah. Okay. I well, am offended I, by that. Okay, then I take it back. <laughs> I'm not a fashion okay. connoisseur. Wait, uh, who are you? 
I mean, I think I'm a little more fashionable than you are. You think you're more fashionable than me? Uh, yes. Leave it up to the audience. Who's more fashionable, Bo or me? Please. Yes. Let's. I mean, let's. Who is more fashionable? Who is more fashionable? Zach? This is wild. I feel like this is. I feel like this is unbelievable. I no. I. You've uh, never picked out an outfit a day in your life. Well, so now you're ripping on my wife. Then. No, I'm <laughs> ripping on you. You are not the fashion connoisseur. Your wife is dressing you. Oh, that, I, I dress much better in these past seven years we've been married than before that. I agree. If, if you go back and you look at like like pre-2016, Zach, uh, there's some embarrassing wardrobes that were going on there. But I think post-2016, uh, and particularly ever since uh, uh, we've been on YouTube, I, I think I've been more, uh, more fashionable. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to touch a nerve. <laughs> You did, and uh, we didn't get my quackatology in. It's you know oh, the whole the oh whole yeah, thing we got to review. Well, well, we got to review real quick how the performance was over the weekend, right? Or are we doing that on Tuesday show? What performance? The two games we play. Oh yeah, well, let's do it let's tomorrow. tomorrow. Okay, let's, we'll do it tomorrow. Let's, let's say that for yeah. tomorrow. Okay. By the way, look at this. The, 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 I mean, the chat is. Uh, I mean, I think Tracer is is uh, this is the most trenchant analysis. Uh, we frankly both just dress like straight white guys. I think that's. <laughs> Pretty much accurate. And there's probably not not much difference between the two of us when when it really comes down to it. Yeah. And so. by the way, you did say early in our second week here that you're working on your wardrobe. My only point is last night's uh, last yeah. night's last outfit, night's outfit was bad. I was trying to was I was trying top. to do something different to try to play into the Kelly Green, and it didn't work. It was okay. it was a bad job. It was the only thing I had, and it was an ugly shirt. There's no doubt about it. I may burn that shirt. I don't even know why it was still in my closet. Probably for that specific possibility, and it, and it didn't come through. For it's the Kelly like, Green? Okay. Like, it's like I kept Mario Goodrich on the roster just for in case I needed a backup nickel, and it, and it happened right away, and it was a disaster. HC says, Bo would be fashionable in like the 70s amongst 30 to 40-year-old men. Is that a compliment that you've ever heard in your life? Yeah, I mean, I do get I look like a young Chevy Chase. Okay. Uh, and so that sort of hits that. Okay. Pretty well. Uh, it's not, that's not crazy. I mean, you are wearing the shirt that I wore last week. <laughs> yeah, I'm wearing this specifically for a purpose. I'm wearing that. Well, this is a fashionable shirt, by the way. Okay. And you can get this, by the way, at allphly.com. Okay. Discount if you're a diehard. That's right. All right. That's going to do it for this episode. Everybody wants to get ready for that Phillies game first pitch coming up in a bit. A big day, a newsy day. The Eagles trade for Kevin Byard. We will have more information on that and everything else going on with the Eagles the rest of the week. Let me find out exactly what our schedule is here very quickly. Tomorrow we are back at 1.30 p.m., Thursday at 11.30, Friday at 2 p.m., and then, of course, the kickoff show and postgame show on Sunday. So for Andrew and Zach and all of the fashionistas out there, we thank you for listening. We will talk to you tomorrow at 1.30, and as always, we love you. Y'all silly like the mayor.